So with that, let's go ahead and uh, get rolling with today's program, <clears throat> Maximizing Your Customer Journey Mapping Program. Uh, uh, today's webinar features uh, two of our customer journey mapping experts, Jennifer Pizzini and Frank Lineweber, and uh, we'll get to know these two better in just a second. But as always, let me uh, tell you that this webinar is being recorded, so you'll receive a link to the recording within the next 24 hours. And then secondly, uh, we are planning to have time for a Q&A period after Jennifer and Frank have finished their presentation. So if you do have a question, uh, you can submit it anytime during the webinar, but uh, just enter it into that question box on your screen. Uh, feel free to do that at any time, but just know we'll be saving all those questions for the Q&A session at the end of the day, today's presentation. So thank you for hearing that. So let's go ahead and meet today's uh, presenters. We have Jennifer Jennifer Passini and Frank Lineweber. Uh, Jennifer is starting us off today, and she is certainly no stranger to the Merit 6 webinar airwaves. Uh, Jennifer is Senior Director of Solution Strategy for Merit CX, and she is responsible for providing CX consultative support to organizations that are looking to implement new CX programs or enhance their ex existing efforts. So, um, Jennifer has been doing this for about 18 years, so I know she's accumulated a lot of great knowledge over the years working with clients of all types and sizes. And uh, we're always thankful for her willingness to share her expertise with us on, on these webinars. And then Frank, uh, Frank uh, Lineweber is co-presenting with Jennifer today, and he has over 30 years of marketing research experience and is currently responsible for working with Merit CX Mobility, also known as auto sector clients, to uh, frame research approaches that best address business issues. Uh, Frank, Frank uh, takes a central role in ensuring first-rate execution and guidance once the proper research approach has been established. He has worked with clients in several industry verticals, including automotive, healthcare, financial services, consumer durables, communications, and travel and tourism. So again, uh, we are pleased to have both Frank and Jennifer with us today, and that's a little bit about each of them. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer. JP? Thanks, Tom. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, let's cover off on today's topics, um, just uh, to give you kind of a preview of the, of the types of things that Frank and I are going to cover. And I'm happy to be joined by Frank. Um, we're going to kind of tag team um, today's webinar, so thanks, Frank. Um, here are the topics for today's webinar. I'm sure some of you when you saw the title of the webinar and the focus, the focus on customer journey caught your eye. It's certainly a topic that um, the CX industry and uh, I know a lot of our clients are talking about. So I just wanted to clarify our focus for today. Our plans are to, to discuss customer journey mapping, but instead of focusing on the merits approach to customer journey mapping, uh, which we're going to cover just briefly, I thought it would be more insightful if we talk about what you do with customer journey mapping when you have a map in hand. So, or if you're thinking about doing customer journey mapping, what will you do with it once you have it? So, Merit CX has given a webinar or two in the past about our approach to customer journey mapping. And just to level set, I'll briefly give you an overview of our approach. But it, for us today, it's really going to be about um, learning more about what you do with it once you have it. But if you do want to know more about our approach, um, we're happy to schedule other time, or um, Tom or I can send you a link to pre those previous webinars. Um, but of course, we're always happy to talk about it because we do believe that there is great value in customer journey mapping. So I don't want to um, kind of shortchange that either. Today, Frank and I will tag team the discussion re related to three ways to leverage customer journey mapping. Um, of course, there's probably a lot of other ways to leverage it, so we're going to only focus on three. And along the way, we'll share um, stories that kind of highlight that particular use case. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, customer journey mapping is a visual representation from a customer viewpoint of the journey that they take with your brand, products, services, people, et cetera. Customer journey mapping allows us to uh, accomplish a couple of objectives. First, it allows us to align um, the organization um, around what the customer is thinking and what they're experiencing. So we often hear that, um, you know, we're siloed or we focus on different things and no one's aligned. And so customer journey mapping can really help to break down those silos 
um, and it brings all the different areas together um, with one common focus on what you're delivering to customers. So it helps to open up that dialogue between parties that maybe um, know that they interconnect, but not really, but don't really talk or interact on a regular basis related to the customer experience. Second, we know that customer journey mapping is a way to um, understand at a deep level what customers experience with you and help surface areas um, along the journey that are particularly impactful that you should consider um, critical steps that make or break your relationship with customers. Customer journey mapping is a, a discipline methodology that um, allows that viewpoint, um, not only from a customer's perspective, but also it gives you a detailed understanding of what those processes are that support the customer experience. And it can give deep insights into some of the things that companies might be blind to because they're, they're either looking at it only from a touch point expected, perspective or only from a customer perspective, but aren't considering those interconnected experiences that customers have across their journey with you. And finally, um, and, and probably the, our focus today is really just leveraging customer journey mapping as a way to um, truly understand what customers experience with you, the pain points that they have, so that you can focus your efforts on continuous improvement and leverage from a customer viewpoint, but also internal perspectives, what you can do to ultimately improve what customers um, experience with you. So that's customer journey mapping in a nutshell. The Merit CX um, process looks like this. Um, you'll notice that there's you know, some things that are optional within this journey. Um, our core to this approach is that it's a multi-step process. Um, we believe strongly that both the internal and external perspectives are needed to create a map uh, to understand customer experiences. Uh, we leverage this approach to create a high-level end-to-end journey, and we leverage the same approach to provide details around micro journeys. So you might think about you know, the total customer journey from end to end, but there's certainly individual journeys that your customers have with you that um, customer journey mapping can, can be used to um, understand those critical aspects of the micro journey. Uh, as I mentioned, internal and external perspectives are important um, to really understand what your organization delivers to customers. Customers have um, um, the viewpoint of what they experience and what they feel, but there's a lot of things behind the scene um, you know, all, all the wheels and um, gears that are shifting within your organization across people and processes, policies and products that, um, that really the customer may not have full visibility into, and so that's why the internal perspective is important. We always conduct qualitative research with employees and customers, but we may also decide to validate findings um, with a research study as shown in step four. The output from a customer journey map should highlight interconnectivity of experiences, those key moments that matter that um, if you do them well, then they'll make your relationship with your customers. If you do them poorly, they might break your relationship with customers. Your strengths and pain points, um, areas that evoke emotions or promote an emotional connection. Um, it'll help to highlight the organization's current performance across those moments of truth and um, areas uh, where customers are experiencing you. It can also help to highlight those preferences and expectations so that as you move forward and you continue to develop and expand your experience design or you roll out new things, you can always go back to preferences and expectations to make sure that you're meeting them. Um, maps look differently um, from organization to organization. Some of this is due to the brand or preferences of that organization, but most importantly, they're tied to specific differences in your journey. Um, and so some of the maps are a summary of journey details. Some of them show a flow of experiences and some are really graphical. Um, where, whatever your journey, customer journey map looks like, we expect, we expect that you're exploring, um, do, whatever it looks like it's tailored to your company or to specific customer groups. At Merrick 6, we created journey maps for similar organizations focused on a similar journey. And I'll tell you that all of those maps look different and the findings are different because it's specific to your organization. To me, a customer journey map is kind of like a treasure map and a recipe at the same time. The treasure is uh, the detailed understanding of customer experience. 
the journey map is like a recipe because it gives you all the components of what customers experience and most importantly the map lays out the groundwork for what you need to do with your program moving forward um, giving you that recipe so uh, let's get into the meat of the conversation and talk about opportunities to leverage your customer journey map as I mentioned, we're only going to focus on three, but there's, uh, and I've only listed probably five on the slide. There's, there's probably many, many other ways that you can leverage a customer journey map. But we find that it's important to um, think about the, that journey in terms of design, uh, continuous improvement, or governance, and the ways that you plan to use it in those ways. At a high level, we talked about why organizations do customer journey, journey mapping. Of course, they want to understand at a deeper level what customers uh, are experiencing, break down those organizational silos, and uh, focus on opportunities to improve. Um, but what what can you really do with it once you have it? Um, and so we're going to talk about some a, a bit a, a bit of a layer below in terms of prescription. Many times when I meet with clients about their CX initiatives, they'll mention that they want to know more about the customer experience or customer journey. And of course, that's a trigger for me to say. Well, the natural step is to talk about customer journey mapping. However, I'm also really careful to ask about once they have the journey map in hand, what are they planning to do? And to talk about the application of customer journey mapping. Uh, without the application, customer journey map is just a map or a visual representation. And although it's very interesting, um, it's, more important, it's more important what you do with it um, than the map itself. Um, we believe that customer journey mapping can be used to support design efforts as a tool to support as a tool to support your continuous improvement efforts and uh, as a way to support governance strategies. And although this list is not complete, as I mentioned, um, we have a few ways that our clients have leveraged customer journey mapping. Um, we list five ways here uh, through experience design. So, you know, if you find a pain point, maybe you realize that you need to reshape what they actually experience and focus on experience design. Um, through creating a measurement strategy, I, I know Merit CX as a CX measurement and management company, we're laser focused on this particular utility of customer journey maps because we want to make sure that we're leveraging what you know about customer experience and their specific journey to make sure that we're helping you measure um, at, their, um, at their appropriate time and in the appropriate ways. Um, you can leverage journey mapping for root cause to support continuous improvement efforts. So again, given that customer journey mapping is focused on um, helping you understand uh, customer experience, it seems very natural that we would leverage customer journey mapping to explore root cause. You can also use it to create plans around operational and business linkage um, to kind of inform that process. And you can use customer journey mapping as a foundational way to operationalize uh, CX. Um, today, we're going to focus on three of those, which is measurement strategy, root cause analyses, and operationalize. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, yeah. So let's talk, so, let's talk about this so, first. Go ahead, Frank. No, okay. So yeah, let's start with design uh, and drill down into some of these uh, critical areas. So you have a journey map in hand and it isolates things like the moments of truth or other important interactions that customers have with your organization. Let's talk about how we can leverage this information to support development or refinement of a CX measurement program. So what do we know about journey mapping that can be used to inform design of a more formal voice of the customer program? Well, we know that the channels or touch points where we come into contact with our customers are. We know what those customers experienced and when or at what point during that journey they occurred. We also have an understanding of the audience or whom we should target to gather the feedback. So from a research design perspective, this means that we've defined the sample or who our target audience is, the timing or the experience triggers uh, the survey content or basically what to ask them and the methodology or those potential channels where we can reach out and ask about those specific experiences. So that's a pretty informed approach to experience measurement. Let's consider an example though for a second. Here's a simplified journey map for a business to business credit card offering. And this is a high level journey that begins with shopping for a product 
to either deepen an existing relationship or go somewhere else, along with several other touch points along the way. So when we look at this journey, we can identify points along it where measuring the experience really matters. And I've shown those occasions with green stars to, to indicate where customers' experiences could have an impact and benefit from knowing how the company is performing. So we can then leverage and prioritize these results based on those areas where the organization is performing poorly or that we have identified as make or break points that really impact customers' relationships with us. And this slide is pretty busy, but it's one component of the journey map we just looked at, the onboarding or the activation step. And these sub-steps comprise and contribute to the overall onboarding experience. This is an example of some considerations that occur during each component and three different types of information that might be available in evaluating the impact at each sub-step. In this example, we have voice of the customer feedback from an existing program in blueprint, blueprint, operational metrics in orange, and financial inputs in green. And all of these contribute to developing a more effective total solution. At Merit CX, we certainly advocate for developing a quality, thorough voice of the customer measurement system, but we also encourage our clients to leverage all of the data available to them to complete their unique CX story. There are likely aspects of experience with a company that customers simply may not be able to comment on or have appropriate visibility to provide information or more informed feedback for us. And for those areas, consider including these types of operational data or details from a transactional or customer database to tell a more complete experience story. In some cases, Financial or business data might even allow for a seamless return on investment story, or at least a way to gauge the financial impact of good and bad experiences. And successful execution begins with a solid design, and there are a few key steps in that process. Initially, include all appropriate internal functional areas in an assessment of their perspective on the company's performance across customer touch points. And those would include point of sale, call centers, direct and indirect digital connections like websites, social media, or apps, and customer groups. And honestly evaluate how these interactions are viewed by the customers. Now, this will provide a hypothesis to draw on, promoting buy-in to the mapping process in general and ownership by these internal parties of the final results. Then, talk to customers to determine if they feel the same way and identify whatever gaps might uh, exist in the per their perceptions uh, compared to the internal parties or their, the functional areas that could affect any required changes. And find out specifically what was missing or what could have been improved and use that information for focused action planning. It's very important to precisely define who the customer is, namely, what is the makeup of their specific persona? This provides critical focus on their attributes, behaviors, attitudes, and even demographics that should be taken into consideration for evaluation of their journey and in designing effective solutions. And if available, you can even overlay recent research conducted among those audiences for additional perspective on their wants and needs. And finally, realize that not every customer has an identical journey. Based on their needs or usage requirements, some customers may combine or eliminate journey steps, or even add additional sub-steps that may not have been anticipated or assumed. Jennifer, do you want to talk about root causes? Yeah, so uh, thanks for coming off at the time. So we'll, we'll switch now to the second um, second opportunity to use customer journey mapping. Um, and I actually love uh, love this use case um, because I because I think that it completely aligns with an organization's desire towards continuous improvement and fully leveraging um, some of the investments that you've already made in customer experience measurement and in your CX program in general. So customer journey mapping is a tool that can be used for root cause analysis. So consider this scenario. 
Um, a SAFE program with ongoing measurement is in place for many years. And the organization, is, like I said, is focused on continuous improvement and they identify experiences, customer segments, and touch points for which performance is scored poorly or their downward trends and experience ratings. And that's the focus of their continuous improvement efforts. So they leverage their VOC program to listen to customers, identify opportunities, and then, um, you know, so they have the opportunities that they, that they know that they need to address. Um, and so they leverage their customer experience data as much as they can, um, but if they can't seem to isolate the specific problem or issue to fix, customer journey mapping can help. So let's consider, uh, consider that situation. Um, in this situation or in this specific scenario, customer journey mapping becomes an exploratory or diagnostic tool that can be used during the action planning process. One of the critical points of an action planning process is going to the exploration to get to the specific root cause to make sure that you're fixing the right things. So customer journey mapping can allow the organization to explore those experiences in a deeper way beyond the ratings and really isolate the problem and, and potentially the fix as well. If your organization already has customer journey mapping completed, I, I think that uh, many of you might have, have um, conducted some customer journey mapping or, um, or you're just starting to think about it, uh, you can start to think about how you're going to leverage those maps um, and how you can consult them for guidance and where to explore. Um, you can leverage that customer journey map to um, identify what resources you should consult related to experience. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the oper operationalization um, part of this. Um, but you can also explore the interconnectivity of experiences. So if you have an issue in one particular area, you can kind of look at it from the perspective of that it's not just one experience that it's interconnected with others. One note that I'd like to say about uh, root cause specifically is that I found personally um, in these efforts that in order to leverage customer journey mapping for root cause, it needs to be a map that explores more than just a high level end to end journey particularly if your business is fairly complex and there's a lot of different um, sub journeys that occur. Typically the maps of, of the micro journey are needed to highlight the detail required uh, for root cause. So you might, need a deta you might need that detail to really understand what's broken and most importantly, who you need to involve to address that fix. So that's one note that I would just point there from a best practice. So let's consider an example. A company decides to conduct customer journey mapping after, tra after tracking customer experience along the customer journey and they've identified some specific, ex specific experiences um, for which they're rated poorly. One of them is rate increases, the other one is, um, which is part of their ongoing business, unfortunately, is, you know, um, prices or rates change. Um, and then the second is um, when agents or when customers are assigned to new agents. So we see that, you know, poor performance in each of those areas. So the focus, um, given that there's not much that a business can do about price changes or rate increases, other than maybe communicate them a little bit better, um, the focus here is on understanding what's going on with assigned new agents in a bit more detail to figure out what can be improved. Of course, there's concern over rate increases, but we're gonna focus on the negative feedback related to assigned new agents. Um, so there's a, a couple best practices to consider. First, from a relation standpoint, your customers do not consider individual touch point experiences. They are on a journey with you and, um, and they know only the experiences from the lens uh, for which they're currently on in your journey. They only know what they experience and what they feel. Um, so that's why the internal perspectives are important. Second, um, viewing your VOC data from a journey perspective most likely doesn't require that you revamp your uh, VOC program. So if you think about your CX program today, if it's structured to look at individual touch points, um, so if you're a bank, maybe you're looking at branch, call center, and your digital channel experiences, um, or you know, if you're, um, you're an automotive company, you might be looking at it at a dealership level and you're looking at it from sales and service. It doesn't necessarily require that you revamp your program completely. We're not advocating for that. However, what it does require that you're able to filter results um, based on where your customers are in a journey. So in this particular case, we, um, they had a VOC program in place. We filtered down to those customers um, that had recently been signed a new agent. So we're not changing anything about the measurement system, 
but only filtering down to those that had been assigned a new agent within the past year. Um, so here's kind of a draft of their journey. Again, they have a lot of VOC data, so it was pretty easy um, to uh, filter their data to get to those customers that have a new agent. And we found a pretty compelling story um, in terms of um, the handling of those customers, the communication that they received, um, what was what was expected of agents in that process, um, what was expected of the company in that process, and what um, what customers expect. And so they were able to make some changes based on this to improve communication, to change processes, and ultimately to uh, make sure that um, at the end of the day, customers were communicated about the change um, in plenty of time so that they could make uh, make an informed decision on whether this agent change was a great fit for them or whether they wanted to choose something else. Okay, so let's talk about the last one in terms of operationalization. Uh, Frank, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, great. Yeah, let's move on to this operationalization section and, and think about the learning that we gained from the journey mapping process in general. So journey mapping shifts an internal customer focus from a single point or mode of connection to a broader perspective on how, how all the experienced components are linked. So it gets their internal staff away from just focusing on the day-to-day -to, -day to looking at the bigger picture, essentially. So viewing all these customer interactions as a journey definitely has impact across functional areas and demonstrates their interconnectedness. It's no surprise that many in an organization are solely focused on ensuring the success of their respective area. But having more perspective or an appreciation of the entirety of the customer experience allows them to see how they fit into the bigger picture and how customers view their relation with the company as a result of the combined efforts of everybody in the organization. So unintentional disconnects lead to service lapses and ultimately to lost customers. Aligning resources toward that common goal and recognizing how critical and interrelated all the component parts are to the greater whole reduces the friction throughout the customer experience and produces enhanced loyalty as a result. And we've talked about the journey mapping process and here's a diagram of how the process can play out. It's basically an iterative progression of events that results in near-term activities that address opportunities or shortcomings. If one doesn't already exist, these activities contribute to the establishment of a voice of the customer program. If a program does exist, they enhance the existing metrics to better reflect the new information. So successful journey mapping is more than simply an academic exercise as you're probably all well aware. And these journey maps should result in tangible returns. These returns will depend on the focus and governments that senior managers contribute from the initiation of the program throughout and beyond the mapping process. And as many of you already know, this is often easier said than done. But senior managers should broadly convey the importance of these initiatives along with their involvement and interest in it which includes support of the actions taken due to the learning and the timelines that resulted. They should also establish an urgency around the outcomes and rally the required resources to achieve them. The results should be transcendent, touching all appropriate functions of the organization, since alignment and harmonization of efforts is key to long-term success. And finally, identifying complementary functions that impact the journey and aligning those efforts for efficient execution reduces friction in service delivery and eliminates customer pain points. Thanks, Frank. So let's uh, look at another example. So I, I mentioned early on that one of the um, benefits of customer journey mapping is breaking down silos. And for me, that's really what, um, you know, what we can achieve through customer journey mapping when you focus on it from a business standpoint and begin to start to operationalize things. So let's talk about how it can break down silos. As I mentioned, um, you know, 
there are your customers view you not from the business unit or the channel or the touch point they're viewing you as a company that they work with and so it's really important that we understand their experiences across all of those things um, and a lot of it's tied to how an organization is structured but we want to understand um, the, the interconnectivity of not only the experiences but the influence and impact that different business units channels and touch points have on those experiences so this is an example of a journey map that we created for a client. It's a great mix of visual and um, details around the journey. So to help demonstrate how the journey map can break down organizational silos, let's focus on one of the moments of truth of this journey. So we're going to kind of focus in on the onboarding and deployment uh, moment of truth only because of, well, a couple of reasons. First, um, customers report um, that they are consistently feeling frustrated, regretful, and anxious. Um, I think we can all agree that we don't want our customers feeling that way. So, so obviously something needs to change. Um, so um, where would this organization go about exploring needs for change? Well, luckily, as part of the customer journey mapping exercise, we included the perspectives of employees who are involved or influence this particular moment of truth. Um, we look at the so we can look at the different businesses that were involved, professional services, product documentation, customer support, sales teams, and the training department, all are very different, but they're interconnected groups because they support this particular experience. But I doubt that, you know, uh, for those of you that are have an organization similar um, to this, have these types of departments, I think you would agree that these business units probably don't have the same reporting structure within the same organization, but in order to work together to fix this, um, they, have to, they have to work together in order to have a positive change. The journey map here gives us current state. In this, in, case, in this case, it gives us negative experiences. It helps to highlight strengths and weaknesses, which could lead to what we need to do to fix, and most importantly, who we need to involve from a group of stakeholders within the organization to support change management and the process of continuous improvement. With that, um, Frank, you want to wrap this up? And sure. Then take questions. Yeah, absolutely. So let's just summarize a little bit here. Uh, journey mapping provides a disciplined perspective on how well organizations are meeting the needs of their customers and how they can improve on the overall customer experience. And while the details of customer journeys are certainly important, leveraging those journey insights to improve and choreograph internal execution is where the rubber really meets the road. Breaking down silos and working together in a more coordinated effort and executing across the course of the customer journey is where the true benefits are realized. Creating a journey map to initiate a voice of the customer program is an excellent approach, but journey maps are also helpful for established programs too. They reflect where shortcomings exist in, a, in programs that are having challenges as well as provide direction to make high-performing programs even better. So thanks, and why don't we open it up for any questions you may have. Okay, great. Thank you, Frank and, and JP. I appreciate all the effort uh, you all put into this super content and on what is certainly a hot topic among uh, today's customer-centric organizations. So it seems like we've been talking about customer journey mapping for quite some time, but uh, it's obvious that CX practitioners and they're still hungry for that insight, so and that's great to see. So um, let's get to some of the questions that came in while you two were presenting. Um, JP, let's start with you. Um, do you ever connect quantitative research, research results to a journey map, i.e., as a way to tie trends to work, um, sorry, to work being uh, being done to increase? Yes. Um, so one of, a couple of examples that we gave, um, and I mentioned as part of the customer journey mapping process, you can kind of connect that step four, which is to conduct a quantitative study um, directly focused on the journey. But in a lot of cases, you know, that you already have existing data that you're collecting either through your tracking measurement or through relationship work that you've done in the past, and you have a lot of that data, and particularly data over time where you can explore um, aspects of the journey by just filtering those results based on where the customers are on their journey with you. So by 
kind of marrying uh, what you know about the customer um, along with um, the feedback that you're collecting at any point in time, you can start to look at results for new customers, for example. If you filter down to the feedback that you're receiving from new customers uh, based on their tenure with you, you know that in terms of their journey with you, they're, they're probably near uh, choice or onboarding in your journey, and so you can look to see um, what you can explore related to your performance related to onboarding and specific aspects of the journey. So, um, you know, I think that that's one benefit um, in terms of having that journey map is to not only direct design efforts, what new measurement you should design, but also taking better advantage of existing measurement that you have to look at it from the lens of customer journey um, to identify things that you're doing really well that you need to continue or pain points that you need to address because over time, those pain points have persisted, which have impacted your relationships with customers at that point and later in their journey. Yeah, if I could just uh, add to that a little bit from an operational operationalization perspective, um, it's good to have uh, quantitative validation of those qualitative insights that the customers are providing. And having that kind of uh, bigger data will allow you to do some driver analysis or maybe some break and make or break analysis on the data to see what the hierarchy of your concern should be. Because obviously, there's no organization with unlimited resources. So you want to be able to attack those things that are going to have the greatest return. So doing a, a true driver's analysis on, on the, the results or, again, a make and break will help uh, target your efforts to where they'll have the greatest impact. Great, thank you. Uh, and Frank, we'll keep it with you. So this person wanted to know, so they're planning to initiate a journey mapping project. So how are these typically kicked off and who should be involved initially? Oh, that's a great, great question. Thank you. Uh, um, I think uh, it should all really initiate with a discovery session, working uh, with internal departments to get a, a sense of, what that rough journey is or how we view the journey uh, to build sort of a straw man approach to have something to work from. And running that straw man by senior management from different departments or, or any departments that would have a uh, customer facing or customer orientation, including even financial services, if there's uh, some kind of financing component to a, a specific um, customer journey to get their buy-in to see if they view it the same way. Plus, that gives you the added benefit of involving them in the process and getting their buy-in and their support for the results on the back end. And then working from that, you would start the, uh, the more internal formalization process of defining what those component steps are in the journey and any preliminary um, sub-steps or micro-journeys that that are also important that you want to get a feedback from customers on. Super, thanks. And uh, JP, I think this came in, a question came in during your um, uh, the section on, on root cause. Um, how do you know whether these negative areas need to be worked on because they may or may not be causing high levels of dissatisfaction? Yeah, and I think uh, that's that's a really good question um, because I think that um, one benefit of the customer journey map exercise is that it involves both internal and external perspectives. So one thing that we always talk about related to employee measurement, and I hope Stacey Boulder's happy with me talking about this, but one thing we talk about it as employee measurement is um, that when your employees report dissatisfaction, but your customers are satisfied because they're, they're still experiencing great things, that's still a problem area because your employees are working really, really hard to deliver that experience, but it's not sustainable. So one benefit of, of exploring and leveraging customer journey mapping as a root cause tool is that you do have those internal and external perspectives um, feeding together to build that map. So employees are telling you, uh, yeah, customers are happy and you know we're delivering, but it's killing us and we have, you know, our tools are terrible, the systems that you ask us to use are bad, 
um, uh, that information can help, uh, you know, looking at it from internal and external can say, while customers are happy and they're not reporting high levels of dissatisfaction, it's still a problem area and a pain point for our organization that we need to address. Okay, thank you. And um, Frank, maybe you can take this one. Could we ask for a micro journey map for one type of interaction only? Uh, certainly. I think you can map out any of the, uh, the major steps in the journey. Um, and like the title indicates, it would not necessarily be a, on a smaller scale, but it would certainly be more focused and, and more defined. Okay, great. Um, JP, if um, this person want to know if they've conducted journey mapping in the past, but it's been a while ago, should they update that? Um, and is the process the same? So, um, so overall, it depends on how old the journey is and how much has changed. So, if your organization continues to evolve um, and you know maybe you've introduced additional products and channels. Um, then it might be a good idea to update the customer journey map. In terms of the process, the process overall will be the same, both leveraging internal and external perspectives um, to help complete that, that journey map. And then um, what you might decide is to start with the old journey and refresh it um, is kind of a, a, a template for what the journey could be and have them refresh what's different rather than recreating it new. Okay. And I'll put this out to both of you. Um, I guess there are many ways, but are, what are the ways you gather qualitative research? Maybe some best practices there. Uh, I think one way, and I'll, I'll start off if you don't mind, Jennifer. One way that, that we really like is to identify who those customers are with our clients to make sure that we're getting the appropriate persona as a first step. And then second, uh, we like to talk to them directly, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, to be able to dive deep into their unique journey. Um, this can also be done in a group setting. Um, again, my preference is more of an individual, one-on-one -on -one kind of in-depth interview with a, a customer. And typically, those things can be anywhere from a half an hour to 45 minutes to an hour because that validates what our internal perspective or the client's internal perspective on what the journey is so we can validate what those uh, those perceptions are. Yeah, and I would just add that in terms of, you know, qualitative methods, um, nothing is uh, nothing is a bad fit. It, it really depends on your audience and the journey that we're hoping to explore. So, you know, we leverage qualitative techniques like in-depth in interviews, both in-person and telephone, uh, focus groups, both in-person and digital, online bulletin boards, um, all of those are possible. It just depends on what's a good fit for your audience and how we're actually going to collect the feedback. So um, nothing's off the table. We just have to really know um, things about your audience. For example, if you have, you know, um, an older audience, you know, maybe we want to focus more on in-person, um, more personal techniques than, than what we do through digital methods. Um, you know, the younger audiences, um, it's easier to recruit them and, and um, get them to participate through digital methods. So we'll, we'll leverage whatever method we can to get uh, the feedback from the right audience. Okay, thank you. Um, Frank, I think this kind of ties to a question you may have had earlier. So while this person says while they have gone through a journey map session in, in the firm, they found it difficult to share a dynamic journey map tool to share with the organization and stakeholders. Um, Excel or PowerPoint seems to be okay, but does not show the insights as you, Frank, depicted in, your, in the presentation. Uh, can you recommend any software best practices to show um, how journey show journey mapping where it passes the, the squint test? Yeah, that's a, another good question. I know that for the clients that, that I've worked with, we typically provide them with a professional graphic artist representation of the journey. And you probably noticed some, some pretty attractive graphical work in the presentation that we went through. I know that Jennifer showed quite a few different examples. But um, in terms of what that map should look like, uh, I, I think the easiest question is to make it easily 
um, digestible by the people that need to have it and use it as a reference tool uh, and certainly distribute it throughout the organization as broadly as necessary to make sure everyone is working off the same page. And again, this is one of the things that uh, senior management or um, divisional management or whatever the case might be should, should help uh, reinforce. And if it comes from them, typically it gets the attention of the people working there. Okay. Um, JP, um, to design a CX program from a customer journey map, where this person want to know where they would start? Yeah, so where I would start in terms of design is um, to think, you know, to think about the journey in terms of the high level and then the detail. So the high level of a customer journey map is, is going to give you the critical moments or sometimes they're called moments of truth or, you know, what that high level pathway looks like. I would start there um, and I would look at that from um, from the lens of the customer. So where where is the customer interacting with you the most? And or where are you um, where are you struggling in terms of experiences? Where are where are customers saying that they're having problems? Where are their levels of dissatisfaction? And that's probably where I would prioritize. So looking in, let's say for example, you have a um, a step around onboarding. Um, all of us know, regardless of your business, you know that bringing on new customers and onboarding them is one of those critical. Um, critical moments of their journey with you. If you don't do that well, then you either taint their experiences later or they just don't stick around um, after that. So if you find that that's an area where you're struggling, then I would focus measurement in those areas so that you can track, track your progress um, to support the root cause that you need to, but also support your, um, your progress around continuous improvement. Um, so I think that, you know, there's there's ways to kind of drill into that. Uh, you know, in some cases, I, as I mentioned, your program might be structured around touch points, and that's okay too. But what, what having a journey map means is that you're able to look at those critical um, moments of truth in terms of customer journey to say, we're struggling with onboarding. Let's look at all, our, all of our results for customers that have been with us less than a year to see if there's something about what they're experiencing or what their feedback or what their perceptions are that would highlight ways to improve what we're delivering specifically to customers that are being onboarded or have been with us um, for a short tenure. Okay, great. And maybe kind of in line with that, uh, JP, um, how would you recommend facilitating a journey map to ensure it doesn't become a process map? Yeah, so I think that's where um, that's where the external perspectives come in. I know I really harped on, in, you know, making sure that you include internal perspectives. Internal perspectives are going to focus on, you know, how they deliver experiences. It's going to focus on the process. It's going to focus on the tools that they have, um, you know. But and so that that's kind of where you get more towards a process map. Customers don't view it that way. Um, when customers interact with you, they don't view it in terms of a process. They view it in in terms of where they are with you, the experiences that they have and how that made them feel. And so that's why we we fold in the external perspectives as part of that. If you truly just want to focus on internal perspectives and you want to focus on process, we would recommend that you just do blueprinting um, where that's internally focused. But by folding in those external perspectives and talking with customers who are at that point in the journey or have recently experienced that point in the journey to understand what they experienced and maybe what they thought went really well and you know what they what delighted them with you or what was a pain point for them and caused them pain will give you that outside of the process outside of what you deliver ultimately what customers experience okay frank let's go back to you so employees that have been involved in the customer journey mapping process how would you get them to commit to their change as most people do not deal with change <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, um, I think the question is probably about more of a the downstream part of the journey mapping process from an internal perspective rather than the whole creation of the journey map, uh, because that would tie into more of the action planning and the, um, the execution end of what the learning was in the, well, 
depending on, on how the journey maps conducted, whether it's the current state map. So this is how we, we are currently serving our customers or potentially a future state map, which is, you know, based on what we've learned from mapping out how we serve our current customers, this is how we should serve our, our customers in the future. Uh, that would be a prologue to that action planning. And involving the, the internal parties in that action planning session is the best way to get their buy-in. They're the ones that are coming up with a solution to the, uh, the issues that have come up or the pain points or, or whatever the, uh, the new direction of the customer experience should be. So they actually contribute from their perspective, and typically they're contributing from how it's going to benefit them in the long run. And certainly, you know, tempering that by how it interrelates with the other organizational components that are at that action planning session. So getting them involved in that, getting them, excuse me, to, um, to also include any in-flight kind of projects that they're currently involved with uh, will help them not only get better engaged with the whole process of improving the, the satisfaction experience, but get more engaged with their area and possibly rallying people in their area to be more uh, engaged with the process in general. Okay, great, Frank. Man, we've had a, so many questions come in, so this is awesome. Um, Jennifer, um, say you find an important pain point. What methods do you use to dig in deeper? Yeah, this is uh, this is important, I think, because um, there's there's not any one way, um, and I would encourage you to look at the data that you have available um, to to leverage what you can to explore. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, you don't need to collect more data to explore that. You, you probably already have it, either from operational data that you have or feedback that you've collected across different touchpoint studies or, um, you know, uh, gathering a voice of employee around those that, um, those that support that particular area. All of those information sources can help to really explore what's going on with that particular pain point. In general, once you identify a pain point, I would encourage that you go through an action planning process. Um, that process really focuses on first defining the pain point, um, and then next, leveraging all the information that you have available, and in some cases, collecting new information um, to isolate the root cause. That way you know um, what the pain, you know exactly what the pain point is, you know what the root cause is, and from there, you can leverage the journey map to figure out exactly the, the different areas of the business, different business units or channels or um, client-facing groups that will be important to um, brainstorming a fix and then ultimately implementing the fix. So once you identify a pain point, I would encourage an action planning process um, with focus on leveraging everything that you have to explore the definition of that pain point and the root cause. Thanks, JP. And then, Frank, um, how should the final journey mapping information be disseminated throughout the organization? Okay. Um, yeah, I think I spoke to that a little bit earlier, but it should definitely, um, the results or whatever the future state map is, uh, should be conveyed to all those people that have um, a participation in the whole customer experience process. And whether that's directly in customer facing uh, roles or if that's behind the scenes and support roles that um, are providing uh, help to those uh, customer facing parties. Uh, and it should come from, again, as high in the organization as possible so it gets the, uh, the weight that it, it deserves and requires to influence action on the part of the people that have to, to engage in the process. Super, thanks. Uh, JP, I think this question came in also on your uh, root cause section. The referencing slide 28 says, can you graph information like on slide 28 if using qualitative research only? And if so, how would you define the axis? Sorry, I'm going to look at that slide real quick. Okay, yeah. So, um, so in this particular example, we're taking we were taking quantitative surveys and filtering it down to the particular point in journey so we could look to see 
um, the overall satisfaction or perceptions at that point. However, you know, a lot of our customer journey, journey mapping, we start as part of as part of the exercise, particularly with customers and with employees too, we're gauging how well that went, um, even from a even from a qualitative standpoint. So, um, you know, I think that you just have to, you know, collectively listen to what you're hearing to say if this is going really well, um, and maybe you use kind of a red, yellow, green type coding to say this is this is going well or this is going poorly or it's kind of a mixed mixed reaction there's some things to fix but there's some things that we do well and so leveraging you know leveraging kind of a qualitative scoring method uh, could, could work to really highlight areas of pain versus things that are going really well that uh, customers have no problems so I think you know in a lot of cases as I started um, the presentation and I know I kind of breezed through the customer journey mapping approach pretty quickly. And so, by the way, some of you request links to the previous sessions on customer journey mapping approach, and we'll be sure that you get those links. Um, but in terms of the approach overall, many times when we conduct journey mapping, it's only qualitative. And so we do have to kind of evaluate if something's a pain point or if it's something that uh, the organization is doing really well based on qual a qualitative assessment. And you know we do that well. Um, but in some cases, you know, our clients will take an extra step and say that we want to validate those things quantitatively. So I think to answer your question, you can leverage um, qualitative research to give you that evaluation, of whether it's something that you do well or it's mixed or you're um, doing poorly today. Great. Thank you. Um, and we're going to wrap it up. Um, we still had some questions that did not get answered, but we're getting close to the top of the hour. If we did not answer your question, we will get back with you personally with the answers. Um, thanks, Frank and JP. Um, awesome job answering all those questions that came in and also in the presentation. So really appreciate that. So um, again, that's going to do it for um, this session. And uh, we hope you'll, uh, one, we thank you for joining us, but then we hope you will join us again on February the 19th for our next Merit CX webcast. Until then, have a great remainder of your day. Thank you very much.